want to. Surah Yunus is revealed in one sitting according to the majority of the scholars. So it's one of those long surahs that came to the Prophet in one shot, as opposed to um, as opposed to just pieces and portions here and there. Uh, and again, it's revealed towards the end of uh, of the Meccan period, and it starts off with uh, Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al Hakim. These are the verses of the wise book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ajaban. And awhayna ila minhum an nas. Are people amazed that we have revealed revelation to a man from amongst them? Um, uh, to warn them. Uh, uh, and, and he also, uh, amanu, and he gives, I'm sorry. Ahasiban nasu. Akana lil nasi ajaban an awhayna ila rajulu minhum an anvir nas. وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنَّ لَهُمْ قَدَمَ صُدْقٍ عِنْدِ رَبِّهِمْ قَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَسَاحِرٌ مُبِينٌ So really what it is is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Are people amazed that we revealed revelation to a man from amongst them? And he says to them uh, to warn mankind and to give glad tidings to those who believe that they will have a firm uh, precedence of honor with their Lord but the disbelievers say, indeed, this is an obvious magician. This is a horrible translation that I'm reading. I'll get a better one for next time, inshallah. So this is uh, the second verse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights now the amusement or how amazed the people of Mecca are uh, and how they're mocking this idea that a prophet has been sent amongst them with news of the last day, with news of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And basically the idea here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us some of the prophets that came before that went through the same thing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that at the end of the day, إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ You will all return to Allah together. Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ بِالْقِسْطِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the process of creation. And then he repeats it so that he may reward those who have believed and done righteous deeds and justice. And those who turn away will have a drink of, 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 uh, of hot water and a painful punishment for that which they used to deny. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his signs. He made the sun a shining light and he made the moon a derived light and he determined for them phases. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the alternation of the night and day. But what I really want to get to, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا وَرَضُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَطْمَأَنُّوا بِهَا وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا غَافِلُونَ Actually, if you look at the khatira I posted, the, the small talk I posted from Surah Yunus uh, just last night, I, I really focused on these two verses, so I won't do that right now. But Allah mentions those who don't want to meet Allah, they don't expect the meeting with God. They are satisfied with the life of this world. They feel secure in the life of this world. And they are heedless of the signs of Allah. So the only refuge that they would find on the Day of Judgment is His punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Indeed, those who have believed, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارُ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ That those who believed and have done righteous deeds, their Lord will guide them because of their faith Beneath them rivers will flow in gardens of pleasure and their call therein would be Subhanakallahumma, exalted are you, O Allah. Wa tahiyyatuhum fiha salam and their greeting would be salam, peace. Wa akhiru da'wahum and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And their last uh, words or you know, whenever they are uh, given something, they would say all praises be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Now why is this important? It gives us a spiritual element now. It takes us into a spiritual dimension here. That at the end of the day, there are some people that have expectations of Allah in the next life. And there are some people that don't have a firm belief in Allah. So they want to get as much as they can in this life. So the only purpose that spirituality would serve for them is to give them betterment in this life. Okay? They don't really think about the next life and they don't really think about the purpose of a hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ يُعَجِّلُ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ الشَّرَّ اسْتِعْجَالَهُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to hasten for the people, the evil that they invoke as He hastens for them good, then He would have said, لَقُضِيَ إِلَيْهِمْ أَجَلُهُمْ Then their term would have ended quickly. What does that mean? 
uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to take these people, if he was to take people's lives, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to kill everyone who disbelieved right away, and if the punishment of God was to come on every person as soon as they disbelieved, uh, then you know everything would have ended very, very, very quickly. And, every, and, and things would have been horrible for people. But, at, but instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves the door open for repentance. He leaves the door open for people to come back as he did with the people of Yunus alayhi salam and as he did with many of the people of Mecca that would receive the Prophet sallallahu alayhi once again. But again, what does spirituality mean to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرُّ دَعَانَ لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when, when affliction touches you, when test comes to you, you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you're lying down or you're sitting down or you're standing. So, you know, when, when things are bad, you find yourself turning towards God and asking God for help and so on and so forth. But as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ uh, As soon as we do away with his hardship and with his harm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَرَّ كَأَنَّمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى, إلى ضُرٍ مَسَّ he walks and he continues with his life as if he never called upon us to remove that affliction that touched him. What does this mean here? A person goes through a difficult time. So we mentioned uh, yesterday in Surah the Tawbah, Allah, sort of, Allah talked about a person who makes promises in their moments of vulnerability, but when Allah makes things easy for them, they don't do anything. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a person who in their vulnerability calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove that harm. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes that harm, it's as if you never made dua. It's as if you never had a relationship with Allah. It's as if you never called upon Him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the problem that we have. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees our failures, that we don't call upon Him unless we want something in this world. But you know, there's this, this, this weakness in the belief of a hereafter, this weakness in the belief of something that comes after. And that was the case with the hypocrites, by the way, in, in Medina as well, that Islam was good as long as it benefited them in this world. As soon as Islam demanded sacrifice from them, and as soon as it made things difficult for them, then suddenly it wasn't worth it anymore because the hereafter, the belief in the hereafter, was not firmly uh, planted in their hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, you know, in that, in that regard, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا أَذَقْنَا النَّاسَ رَحْمَةً مِّن بَعْدِ ضَرَّاءَ مَسَّتْهُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when we give the people a taste of mercy after, بَعْدِ ضَرَّاءَ مَسَّتْهُمْ After the adversity has struck them. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at that point, إِذَا لَهُمْ مَكْرٌ فِي آيَاتِنَا at that point, they conspire against our verses. They conspire against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is of course the ultimate hypocrite. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him out of his difficult time. And not only does he forget his relationship with Allah, he starts to do things that, are, that, that take other people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And this is of course talking about uh, the hypocrites, the people of Mecca and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them um, of, of turning away from him and warns them uh, of being pleased with this life and not focusing on the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us this idea, وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ دَارُ السَّلَامِ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ In verse 25, and Allah invites you to the home of peace and He guides whom He wills to a straight path. If you realize just a few verses earlier, يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ Those who are seeking pleasure from Allah, those who are seeking goodness in the hereafter, Allah guides them by means of their faith. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ دَارِ السَّلَامِ Allah is calling you back to the home of, of peace. وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ And He guides whom He wills to the straight path. Verse 26 is more beautiful than perhaps anything, subhanAllah. Verse 26, Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for those who have done good, is, uh, is good in return, is excellence in return, and more, and extra. Why is that powerful? Because لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ That those who show excellence is excellence in return refers to Jannah. But what is more than Jannah? They asked the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet وسلم, says, and نَظَرُوا إِلَىٰ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ To be able to stare at the face of God, to be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
while he's pleased with you is even more than Jannah. In, in Surah Yunus, in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا وَرَضُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those who don't want to meet us, they don't expect a meeting with God, and at the same time, they're pleased with the life of this world. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is mentioning that what's greater than the motivation of paradise is wanting to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see Him while He's pleased with you. So if you connect these two verses, it's, it's very powerful, Okay. The, the greater driving force for the believer, even more than Jannah, is the pleasure of God, is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What dulls the senses of the one who turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا يرجون لقاءنا وردوا بالحياة الدنيا. They don't want to meet God, and they are pleased with the life of this world. For us, not only are we not pleased with the life of this world, but you know we want Jannah, we want paradise, and even more than Jannah, we want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while He is pleased with us, and that's something that's far more powerful, and that's something that's far more of a motivating factor uh, for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Qul bi uh, that say in the in the uh, in the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his mercy, that is better than everything that they collect, that is better than everything uh, that everyone else has. Your joy should come in the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy. Um, and that is better than all that they accumulate. In the previous surah, in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَأَوْلَادُهُمْ Do not be amused by the amount of wealth and children that they have, meaning the goodness and ease in this world that they have. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ بِهَا Rather, Allah is punishing them with their wealth and with the goodness that they have in this world. Here Allah says in verse 58 in Surah Yunus, shift your focus. Bifadlillahi, in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, let that be the source of joy for you. Huwa khayrun mimma yajma'un. It's better than what they accumulate in the first place. So in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't look at them and, and feel a sense of envy for them. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you shouldn't be looking at what they have in the first place. So what they have is not a sign of Allah's pleasure upon them. And what you have is not a sign of Allah's displeasure upon you if you don't have much. And in any case, you should be focusing on something far greater and something that will give you far more pleasure. And that is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and, and, and the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, uh, time is already running short. Uh, we're actually already over time and we still have a lot to do. So uh, I do apologize. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in, in verse 70, مَتَاعٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ إِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ ثُمَّ يُذِيقُهُمُ الْعَذَابَ الشَّدِيدِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that for the opposite side, uh, for those that have turned away from God, is a brief enjoyment in this world, and then to us is their return, and then they will face a severe uh, punishment. And, you know, finally in, in Surah Yunus, you know, what's, what's really uh, beautiful and powerful because again, everyone wants to seek something good in this world. Everyone wants to seek something that makes them happy in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that what the Qur'an brings to us is not just happiness in the next world, in the next life. What the Qur'an brings to us is a sense of purpose um, in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, I'm just looking for the verse here. Ya ayyuhan nasu, so verse 57, Ya ayyuhan nasu, qad ja'atkum maw'idatum min rabbikum, wa shifa'un lima fis sudur, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. Allah says, O mankind, there has come to you instruction from your Lord, and healing for that which is within the hearts, and guidance and mercy for the believers. So this concept here, uh, that the Qur'an and what divine revelation gives you is a cure for the heart. It's a sense of purpose. It's guidance. It's better for you. Focus on that is highlighted in Surah Yunus in this situation. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the end of uh, Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاتَّبِعْ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ وَاصْبِرْ حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ and so follow what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and be patient until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passes his judgment, and Allah is the best of all judges. Now, this is a transition. It's a transition point. In Surah Yunus, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not talk about the punishment that comes to the people yet. The punishment and the destruction of nation and so on and so forth is not highlighted uh, in Surah uh, Yunus. Um, but instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses on the reward and He focuses on the pursuit of the hereafter. And subhanAllah, even the story of Musa alayhi salam as it comes. I'm sorry guys, we're just going to go over time today. Uh, so I hope you guys are not signing off. But even as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the story of Musa alayhi salam in Surah Yunus, Allah gives us different aspects of, uh, of prophets, right? He gives us different aspects of the, life, of the lives of these prophets within different surahs, depending on what the context of that surah is. When he mentions to us Musa alayhi salam, as he does so frequently in the Qur'an, which is in the, in the 80s, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Musa alayhi salam um, calling Fir'aun and Fir'aun turning away from him. وَقَالَ مُوسَى يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ Sorry, there was a pause. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Musa alayhi salam calls upon his people that if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so upon him place your belief if you are truly Muslims. And, Allah, and, and Musa alayhi salam calls upon them and Musa alayhi salam says, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ uh, that, that, oh Allah, you gave to Fir'aun and his mala and his establishment splendor, zina wa amwalan fil الْحَيَاةِ dunya. Oh Allah, you gave to Fir'aun and you gave to the people of Fir'aun uh, wealth and you gave them the splendor of this world. But oh Allah, what we, are, uh, what we are seeking is more than that. Why? Because those people, all they did with the wealth that was given to them and all they did with the glamour that was given to them, an sabilik, they turned people away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam, everything that he's talking about here, everything that Allah mentions to us with the story of Musa alayhi salam, is Musa alayhi salam warning Fir'aun of the punishment of Allah and telling his people that if we stay firm, Allah will give us victory. So it's messages of firmness that we're getting from Musa alayhi salam. It's not much of the, the rest of the story, but rather the warning to Fir'aun of punishment and Musa alayhi salam telling his people to stay firm and they will find victory from Allah. So Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu at the end of the surah, follow what has been revealed to you, be patient until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will judge, and Allah is the best of judges. Surah Hud, which is the next surah, talks about the punishment. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he noticed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day that his hair was turning gray, and he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, qad asra ilayka shayb Suddenly you have gray hairs in your hair and your beard, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Shayyabatni Hud wa akhawatuha. Surah Hud and the likes of Surah Hud caused gray hair to the Prophet ﷺ because Surah Hud will turn to the actual punishment and the destruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to the people that turned them away. And, and so it's the consequences now, once again, as we saw with Surah Al A'raf, Surah Al Anfal, it's the consequences that come to them. Uh, and really, uh, Surah Hud mentions this idea of not being deluded by the delay in punishments. Not being deluded by the delay in punishments. That it will come. And so the Prophet ﷺ was saddened. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, Azizun alayhi ma'anitum, harisun alaykum. He loved his people. He felt empathy. So he hated that, that they would have to be destroyed because they turned away. So we'll talk about Surah Hud tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala. I really apologize for going so far over time. Uh, I really did go over time today. We hit the 40 minute mark. So uh, Surah Hud, once again, what you need to know about it is that Surah Hud represents the transition point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually mentions the punishment uh, for turning away. And the, 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 the lecturing is to the people of Mecca. And Allah commands the Prophet وسلم, to stay firm and he commands the believers to stay firm in their lowest point. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start with Surah Hud uh, tomorrow. So jazakumallah khairan. Uh, for tuning in. Subhanallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka.